Hey everyone, Julie Golub here, and if you're a subscriber or fellow social media peep, thank you for tuning in. If you're new to my videos, welcome. Uh, if you found this video because you or someone you love is affected by juvenile myositis or juvenile dermatomyositis, JDM for short, hopefully it will give you some insight as I share a bit about our family's journey. So with Giving Tuesday right around the corner, I also wanted to provide an update on where we are on our daughter's rare disease journey. I will leave links to earlier videos if you want to check those out. But to recap, <laughs> our oldest daughter was diagnosed with juvenile dermatomyositis, it's a mouthful, <laughs> back in August of 2019 when she was 11. JDM is a myositis disease where the immune system goes hyperactive. Instead of just fighting off sickness or an infection, the body attacks itself. It can steal a child's ability to walk, play, uh, and in severe cases, even the ability to swallow. With JDM specifically, the disease presents as a facial rash and calcinosis of the skin. Those are inconveniences compared to what's going on inside. Uh, the immune system attacks the muscles. Looking through these photos, it's been a challenging couple of years. Gosh, I remember that first appointment like it was yesterday. It was overwhelming and distressing, uh, especially when I learned we'd have to administer weekly shots of methotrexate. That's a, that's a chemotherapy drug. The current treatments for JM, though life-saving, are often borrowed from childhood cancer treatments. Those side effects can be debilitating, emotionally draining, and, and even cause lifelong complications and, and additional side effects. So it's hard. <laughs> we also have to take a lot of precautions to keep her as healthy as, as possible. Even a small cold can cause her immune system to launch an invasion. The result is what they call a flare. And our daughter has had a couple of flares and they are so discouraging because essentially it means going back to the beginning, ramping up all those meds, adding more treatments. That's one thing when you know you're on a good path, and then suddenly you have to take a detour, an unknown detour that will add a lot of time and new challenges. Yeah, that's, that's emotionally tough on everyone in the family. Currently, there are still no FDA approved treatments for JM, rare disease, right? Uh, I used to keep track of how many shots, infusions, new medications, all of that, but now we just keep putting one foot in front of the other. We had to make many changes in order to reduce our daughter's risk of a flare and be on track to that remission <laughs> as quickly as possible. So for starters, uh, I'm a homeschool mom now <laughs> with all the colds that make their way through schools, the flu, and now COVID, uh, we made the decision to homeschool until remission. We've all learned a lot uh, and it's working for us, but for other families, this just isn't an option and my heart goes out to them. Uh, let's see, we also decided to go gluten-free. There's not a ton of research on this, but we chose this route to reduce inflammation, not to be deterred. Munchkin has enjoyed learning how to bake sourdough, brownies, and even macarons. Uh, <laughs> very good. I've limited my travel and competition schedule this year and last year with so many events canceled. It made it easier to not have to say, no, <laughs> sorry, I can't make it. Uh, but with next year with conventions and shows, this mama will need to stay home and decrease the odds of bringing an illness home. So eating at restaurants, going to museums or the movies, air travel, weddings, getting my hair cut. Oh my gosh, it's so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been hard. The older Munchkin gets, now that she's a teenager especially, I can't help but be a little sad about the things that she's missing out on. And even though we have a routine and lots of love and so much to be grateful for, I also think of how this will continue to affect her. Watching her go from 11 to 13, seeing her cheeks puff and her skin swell, that's one thing. But there's an underlying dread knowing how hard long-term steroids are on the body. The infusions also really take it out of her. 
she dreads shot nights, not so much for the needle now, but for how it makes her feel the next day. We all cannot wait for Fridays and Saturdays to be methotrexate free. On a happier note, we added a lot of animals to our care and we have quite the mini farm <laughs> with chickens and ducks and guinea fowl and cats and two dogs that keep us busy. Thank goodness also for FaceTime and Zoom that help us stay connected with family and friends. We've taken a, a couple of family trips in the car to experience outdoor adventures that are safe. Uh, the whole family was able to go on an elk and pronghorn hunt with the Oconto River Kids charity. That was a huge highlight for us, and I'll leave some links down below. We look forward to the days when we can hop on a plane and go to big family get-togethers or to amusement parks, to dinner parties. And, and now for my 13 year old school dances. Oh, I can't believe I have a teenager. <laughs> when you look at all of the sacrifices we make for her health, some may think it's over the top. If you have even been vocal about that, those people aren't there for the long infusion days at the hospital, the uncomfortable medical testing procedures, the nausea from the weekly shots, the, the puffy cheeks from all the steroids, the underlying nagging worry that a flare could set everything back, they're not there for that. We have done everything the doctors have asked and it is paying off. We haven't had to contend with a flare in a long time. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> We've even been able to slowly reduce medications and stretch out those infusions. I cannot tell you how thrilled we are about that. Every time, there's good news. I think of all of the people who supported us and sent prayers and well wishes. We are so grateful. As Munchkin battles JDM, there has also been progress made for this disease, and much of that is due to the dedication of a charity called Cure JM. Because JM is rare, research is only made possible through the incredible generosity of people who make contributions. There are now more new treatments in development for JM than ever before thanks to this charity. Drug treatments in the research pipeline may improve the lives of children, maybe even our daughter. And right now there are two drugs on their way to clinical trials in JM patients. One is a possible steroid replacement with far fewer side effects and complications to contend with later on. Yes. Uh, another has already shown improvements in muscle strength and skin conditions in JM patients. The hope that these treatments give families like ours <laughs> with JM is hard to put into words. Cure JM invests in new treatments, clinical trials, creating centers of excellence, and establishing a Cure JM clinical care network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit curejam.org. If you'd like to make a donation to the charity, I have a page set up on their site where you can contribute in honor of our munchkin, our family. Uh, this year's theme is Hope Heroes, and gifts will fund research and help give kids with JM a brighter future. And best part, thanks to the Coffee Family contribution, uh, for every donation made before Giving Tuesday, they're going to match it dollar for dollar. I will leave a link below, but if you prefer good old fashioned checks by mail, I will leave that information as well. Thank you so much for watching. And if you do have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. If you plan to contribute, a huge thank you there as well. As always, I appreciate you so much. And until the next one, be safe, have fun, and live your life fully loaded.